got a great big hand clap. We have people that are out of town for the holidays. We just, Father God, we bring them before you right now. All of our family, our church family, our relatives that are traveling, that are on the road, that are in other places visiting family. Father God, we just plead the blood of Jesus over them. We just loose the holy angels around them to keep them, protect them, and guard them. And Father God, for our lost loved ones, we pray in the Holy Ghost from this day forward on their behalf, knowing that you are working all things to our good. And what Satan means for evil, you are turning it, even this hour, to your good, for your glory. Yes. Father, we rejoice yes. that you are the God that sees everything, yes. knows everything. Amen. Your arm is not short to deliver. Yes. You are not hard of heart, but compassionate and long-suffering. Yes. And you perfect those things that concern us. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So, Father God, even now, while we consecrate this time, we know that you are working behind the scenes in the spirit realm in areas that we could not solve, in things that we cannot deal with, in pains that we cannot heal. You, Father, are moving because you love your children. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you Father. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You. Anoint us to hear and receive. Anoint us to understand and perceive. Anoint us to acquire and control and, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, possess. Let us not allow it to slip. Yes. Let all of us leave this place changed yes. in Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. And the people said, Amen. 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 We'll give them another hand clap. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I'd like to thank you, everyone out on the internet. Uh, we'd like to welcome you first to join us today. And I'd like to thank you for uh, your response to the uh, prophetic word for 2020. Uh, it shows me that you were ministered to, <coughs> that you were blessed, and that's all I live for. Is Hallelujah. To be God's vessel for, for people that will receive. And I'm very humbled by the response and how many people have been ministered to by that word from the Lord for 2020. The important part is that we receive it and not allow it to slip from our consciousness. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. <clears throat> I had instructions from the Holy Spirit, which I'm going to obey. May be interrupted once or twice by Brother Lance and, and sister uh, joining us, and Brother Garcia coming to minister to us. We have two guest ministers that are going to be coming within the next month to two months. And uh, it might be interrupted. Maybe they'll even end up ministering along the same lines. Let's just see what God does. But uh, the Lord's going to bring one ministry to a higher level, and he's going to kickstart and release another ministry. Amen. And uh, so we're looking forward to what the Lord's going to do in these two uh, ministries that I'm talking about. But the Holy Spirit very clearly instructed me to begin a series of teaching on the Holy Spirit in all aspects of what that deals with. The personality of the Holy Spirit, uh, the person of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, all things Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? I have no idea how long it's going to take, but I do know this. It's more than just a teaching. We've been dealing a lot in this church with uh, end time uh, <coughs> messages in the, in the Holy Spirit during prayer and preparing this church for these last hours. Amen? Amen? Being able to stand victorious in Christ Jesus and not fall in the ways of the flesh. If, you're, if you are going to stand victorious, now I'm not talking about just make it through with, you know, like, uh, anybody ever watch cartoons when you were little? One of my favorite cartoons was Leghorn Foghorn, that big stupid rooster. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be hit by a truck. I remind you. And he'd be, 
picking them up. Go, Thank God they're all numbered. <laughs> you know, and you can put them back in place where they were. Well, you don't want to get caught up into heaven like Leghorn Foghorn, holding all your feathers under your arm, just barely making it. All your fur knocked off by the devil. Amen? Amen. You want to go from here into glory victorious. Amen. As an all-powerful, kingdom-demonstrating member of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. The difference between those that squeak by, exhausted, despaired, and holding their feathers, and those that are holding crowns and crying and screaming the glory of the Lord, standing on the devil's neck, is how well they are controlled and manifested with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You absolutely will need the fullness of the Holy Spirit in your life, and particularly, listen to me out there, in your ministry, if you're going to be victorious, not just survive, but victorious as a member of the army of God in this last move of God. Amen. You've got to be a Holy Ghost person. Amen. Well, brother, I don't know about that. Look, I didn't say you can't be saved. I didn't say you can't, you can't love God with all your heart. But to walk in victory... And number two, establish and get done what God wants you to do in your ministry and in your life. You've got to be a Holy Ghost person. Amen. You should have amen better. That was amen. Spot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now, do we know people that are not baptized with the Holy Spirit? Yes. yes. Somebody talk to me. Yes. You got a lot of people out of town. You got to make up for it. Amen. Yes, we do. Do we know a lot of people that aren't filled with the Holy Ghost that love God? Yes. yes. That's not the issue. But if you don't know the ways of the Spirit, you will not be able to deal with spiritual ways. Woo. Amen. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. What is God? Spirit. Spirit. What is Satan? Spirit. Spirit. What are you? Spirit. Spirit. You're both. Yes. Your spirit locked up in the flesh. And if your flesh doesn't know how to walk in the Spirit, work in the Spirit, war in the Spirit, you can't deal with spirits. Amen. 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 It's just that simple. Amen. But we've turned it into brain surgery, folks. We've turned it into all kinds of excuse and manner of ignorance. And we've got to get out of that and get out of it quickly to be effective and to survive victorious between now and the rapture of the church. Amen. Can I hear a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Yeah. So I wrote down one side of notes to start off. And we're just going to let the Holy Spirit lead. Yes. We, may, we may mix and match and I might start in... We're going to cover tongues. We're going to cover the gifts. We're going to cover how to manifest with the Holy Spirit, how to walk in the Holy Spirit. We're getting it all. Amen? When we're done, you're going to be full of the knowledge of the Holy Ghost and the manifest. You'll, you'll, walk, you'll be able to walk perfectly with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. With signs, wonders, and demonstrations. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. You're going to be Holy Ghost people. Amen. Hallelujah. Which means you're going to be victorious people. Amen. You're going to discern, deal with things, and be victorious over things that run right over people because they can't see it, don't know what's going on, and certainly can't handle it. Amen. 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 You shall know the truth, and the truth <laughs> makes you free. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I was writing down here, we're going to start with the person of the Holy Ghost. And then the Holy Ghost says something over here on this page. And So we're just going to start with some fundamentals. Let's, let's look at some foundation things about the Holy Ghost. Turn with me over to Ephesians chapter 4. Now, folks, this, I don't want to talk too fast. I don't want to go too long. Uh, but this is powerful stuff, and I beg you to have ears to hear. I beg you to have ears to hear. I plead with you before the Lord. Hear what God's got to say. Take it to heart. Treasure it. Get it down inside you. Never let it slip. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, the first thing the Holy Spirit started speaking to me was this verse right here. Ephesians 4, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, isn't it interesting that the very first scripture that the Spirit of God quickened on my heart to start this lengthy series about the Holy Spirit on is grieve not the Holy Ghost. You got to understand going into this the seriousness of the ground that you stand on between your relationship and the Holy Ghost. I know Pentecostal spirit, so-called spirit-filled people that are so ir ir 
irrev lack of reverence. What's the word I'm looking for? Irreverent about the things of the Holy Spirit, even though they claim to be Holy Ghost people, they literally grieve the Holy Spirit constantly. Amen. Amen. You know people that are saved that are on dangerous ground with the Holy Ghost, which puts them in dangerous ground with Father God. And they're so ignorant about the Holy Spirit, they don't even know they're on shaky ground with the Lord, even though technically they're saved. Now, folks, you've got to get all that out of your life if you're going to stand on the demonic, in the demonic onslaught that's set before the church in these last days. It's serious stuff. I even looked at an old tape of Brother Hagin's and in one of his winter cat meetings, he was teaching very explicitly about people's hearts and the lack of reverence toward the Holy Ghost, and they didn't have ears to hear. They're panning the crowd, and the people are just, they don't want to hear it. Come on. We've gotten so loosey goosey, so irreverent, so so callous toward the things of God. We've gotten into that area of ever learning and never able to come to a full knowledge of God. We're just hearing what we want to hear, living what we want to live, and begging God to fix our messes. Amen. Where if we'd stop grieving the Holy Spirit and get reverence back into our hearts, it will do wonders for us. Amen. Amen. I remember the day when, when, a, when a man of God, a, a pastor or a visiting uh, preacher would, would go into the Spirit and, and, and give an utterance in tongues. Everything froze. Amen. If they were walking with their kids, they stopped. Amen. If, if they were reaching for something, they stopped. If, if, if something else, everything just went into an instant freeze. Why? God's talking. Now people be speaking in tongues of people digging in their purse and, and looking through this and looking at their phone. There's no reverence of God anymore. We've got to get a, a sacredness back into his presence, his person, his, his among us in the church. Come on, brother. Back when I was first being raised up in the ways of God, somebody had prophesied, we were writing it down. We were turning, we brought tape players to church to make sure we got something from God and took it home with us. Most of the body of Christ now they get a, they get a word from God. They couldn't tell you a week later what God what God said to them. Just so indifferent and irreverent to them. We need to give a sacred respect back to our relationship with the Holy Ghost and do it quickly. Amen. God talks, what are you doing? When tongues and utterance goes forth, how's your posture? What are you thinking? Oh, they're just that's just the gift. No, that's him. He just happens to be using a vessel. Mm, hallelujah. No different than you picking up your phone and calling me. Oh, it's just the phone. No, that's Darlene talking to me through the phone. Right. Come on. Amen. 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 We, we brought everything down to... to just family and stuff in the church when God is literally trying to be God in our lives again. Amen. Amen. How many people you know, well, I want none of that Holy Ghost. I don't believe that Holy Ghost junk. Amen. Do you think that grieves the Holy Ghost? Yes. yes. Sure. Oh, that tongues is of the devil. How many good denominational <coughs> people do you know Say that without hesitation in their voice. Yes. Yes. Do you think that grieves yes. the Holy Ghost? Yes. Yes, Lord. Amen. The Spirit of God said, before you do any teaching about me, share my personality, share my heart, talk about relationship, because it all hinges on that. You'll never be stronger in the Holy Ghost than you respect the Holy Ghost. We think just because we have gifts and talking tongues, that makes us strong. No. Mm -hmm. It just makes us a vessel. Amen. Our strength comes by our relationship with Him. And by the way, take a note. The Holy Spirit is not an it. Amen. When it comes, when it shows, when it speaks, He's not an it. He's a Him. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. How disrespectful would it be when Pastor Joe comes up and 
Here it is. Come on. Does that sound like respect? Well, here's my wife and it sitting over there. Does that sound like honor? Would that offend Alan? Would that offend Pastor Daryl? And we call the Holy Ghost it all the time. Or how about this? I don't want none of that junk in my church. What do you think that does? I don't care how saved you are. Where are you with him? Amen. Amen. Now you think you're going to have power with him in the day of adversity? We need to just raise our hands and make a covenant. God, I have slipped. I have not kept sacred and holy and honored in my heart. Your presence, Holy Spirit, forgive me. Hallelujah. This stuff is sacred. You hear a tongue and interpretation. That's God talking through his chosen vessel. Amen. Glory to God. Now look over Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Look at somebody as you're turning to Matthew 12. Say, repent and get sacredness back in your heart. Get honor back in your heart. Get honor back to your heart. Oh, I mean that with all my heart, folks. How many people do you love mock the Holy Ghost you say you believe in? Amen. And don't think for a second it doesn't affect their ability to stand in the Spirit when attacked by spirits. Did you hear me? Amen. 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 Did you find Matthew 12? Amen. Look at verse 31. I want to show you that how serious this is with God. Jesus is talking here. In my Bible, it's in red letters. Amen? Amen. He says, wherefore I say unto you, Jesus is talking. Say, Jesus is talking to me. Jesus is talking to me. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy of the Holy, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, watch, shall not be forgiven unto men. Amen. We're in Matthew 12, 31. Let me read it again. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner, say all manner. Oh. Oh. See, all types of sin. All types of sin. And blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Now that's Jesus just about saying, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you will not be forgiven. Now how much holy honor and respect does Jesus give the Holy Spirit? Is supreme. It's above the Father God and Himself. You can talk about Father. You can talk about me. We'll forgive you. You talk about Him in a blasphemous way, you'll never be forgiven. How many Christians do it constantly and even make jokes about it? Oh, you one of the tongue talkers? You do all that mumbo jumbo? He's not mumbo jumbo. Come on, brother. Why do you think I pray I want the Holy Ghost in this church more than anything else? Jesus gave him supreme honor above his own self. Let's read the next slide. Are you ready? Amen. Amen. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, say Jesus. 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 It shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world neither in the world to come. My God, you think it's serious? How you respect and honor the Holy Ghost? Jesus put it above everything else and above everybody else. You talk to me, make a joke out of me, use my name in vain, use it as a constant cuss word, I'll still forgive you. You talk against the Holy Spirit, I'll never forgive you. Not in this lifetime where you're sitting and not for eternity, you'll never be forgiven. My God. You think honor toward the Holy Ghost and not grieving Him is serious with God? Amen. It's supremely serious. Hallelujah. 
Now, I said, well, you know, everybody said, well, what's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost? Have I blasphemed the Holy Ghost? I looked it up in the concordance. You got to, you don't have to be a brain surgery, a surgeon, just buy a concordance. You don't have to be a Greek scholar, just buy a concordance. I looked up blasphemy in that verse in the concordance. It's blasphemia, is the Greek word, blasphemia. And it means this, a vilification. Oh, tongues is of the devil. You just blasphemed him. Vilification, making him evil. When you say tongues is of the devil, you just blaspheme the Holy Ghost. <coughs> Vilification, evil speaking, impious talk. What's piety? Purity and righteousness. Don't you believe in all that Holy Ghost mumbo jumbo? Impious, irreverent. You're not going to be forgiven. Amen. Hallelujah. How many so-called spirit-filled churches don't even want him manifesting in their main service? Somebody might be offended by that Holy Ghost stuff. Right. Impious. <coughs> Irreverent. <clears throat> Evil speaking of, like he's an offender. He's constantly grieved. And transgressed weekly in Sunday services. <laughs> so it doesn't matter talking about his gifts and how to manifest in the gifts, how to prophesy, how to, how to operate with the gift of healing. Forget all that stuff till you get a holy fear and reverence back in your heart toward him. And the sacredness of his presence about you. And an honor and respect of him in your life again. To you right now, number one, stop apologizing for it. Well, yeah, I talked in tongues, but but only just shut up. Amen. You do him a disservice acting like he has to be explained in an apologetic manner by you. He Amen. is God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at John chapter 16. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good teaching. Amen, brother. How many people do you know, even in Assembly of God, Church of God, Four Square Gospel, Spirit filled churches, don't want him around and joke about him? And if somebody does prophesy, they're either in shock and horror or they're just walking, they keep walking to the restroom. Absolute disrespect. And wonder, why don't I operate the gifts? How come he doesn't talk through me? You just answered the question. Amen? Amen. Amen. John chapter 16. Look at this. Not only is he given the highest level of honor and respect, but look at what Jesus said about him. He's, verse 12. I have yet, he's talking to the disciples. It's getting close to the time for him to be crucified and offered up as a sacrificial lamb for the sins of all. Look what he says to the apostles. I have many things to say unto you. I still have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You're not mature enough to understand them. You're not developed enough to understand the things I still need to teach you. <coughs> How be it, when he, say he, he, not it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whos whatsoever he shall hear. And I underline that. Whatsoever the Holy Ghost hears from the Father and from the Son, that will he speak, and he will show you things to come. Amen. So what's that tell you right now? Jesus said in Jesus' word, you can't understand things that you need to know unless the Holy Spirit himself is involved in your life and in you. Amen. Jesus couldn't even teach it to them in person. The things he still needed to teach them, they could not comprehend until the Holy Spirit came on them and in them and resided with them. So you'll never understand the things you need to understand about Jesus himself without the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Did you hear me? 
I don't care what Bible college they went to. I don't care what denomination you're talking to. Have you ever talked to one of your Baptist brothers or sisters? And so look at that. And they go, they can't see it. Did you did you read it? Well, I don't see what you're talking about. I mean, it's like they're staring at a blank wall. Why? Because it takes the Holy Ghost to teach them and get them past just Jesus Christ crucified. Amen. That's why you Amen. can't explain to half the denominational people. By his stripes, you were healed. Yeah, but. All they got is a demon to yell, but. Well, what do you think it was for? I don't know, but. They cannot get past just the cross because they have not allowed the Holy Ghost to come. They don't see Christ to heal it. They don't see Christ to deliver. They, they, well, yeah, I mean, I know I read in the Bible, but that's where it stayed in the Bible. Those days are gone. Amen. It's not that they're super rebellious. They cannot see it. Come on. Amen. There's things beyond the cross, the fullness of Christ, that you're only going to learn when the Holy Spirit comes in and then he starts his teaching ministry about Jesus. Come on. You can't even get the lordship of Jesus down. You'll stay stuck in, well, I'm the sinner saved by grace. We're all going to sin every day for the rest of... That's a lie that blindness comes because you don't understand that he is holy. He makes you holy. You start thinking holy. Amen. Without the Holy Ghost teaching you the holiness of Christ and the holiness of the blood, you think you're a sinner that has to sin every day. Come on, brother. Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at somebody and tell them, I have to have the Holy Ghost to learn Jesus to the level that Jesus is glorified in my life. He's glorified. Just in my read life. it again so you know I didn't make that up. Albeit when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself. What's his primary ministry? For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. What he's just saying. The Holy Spirit's ministry is to teach you things that he hears from the spirit realm, and his primary ministry is to glorify Jesus Christ. You can't even live, you can't even learn the things it requires to live a life that glorifies Jesus without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. God is not glorified when you die sick of cancer. God is not glorified when you're poverty stricken. God is not glorified when you have psychological issues. God is not glorified when you have demonic presence. God is not glorified in all the things that the, the denominational people accept along with the cross and reject in the Holy Ghost. They can't see it till the Holy Ghost comes in and teaches them. You couldn't see it either. Come on. You'll oh, never yeah. be able to understand to give Jesus the glory he deserves without the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit. It'll all just, just be words to you. That's why you can get doctors with PhDs in denominational Bible school colleges that don't believe any of this. They're not even born again. But they have doctors of divinity. Amen. Teaching ministers stuff they don't even know. Yes. And they all walk out with 1% of it. That, that's what they believe right there. By his, at the cross, he died for our sins. We are resurrected in his righteousness. We have eternal life. And everything else is a history book and a used-to-be book. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the God. The reason you sin every day is you haven't let the Holy Ghost teach you holiness. Amen. Holiness is Christ-like. Amen. It's not mysterious. What is being holy? Living like Jesus. That's simple. Get it off your wristband. What would Jesus do? And get it in your heart with the Holy Ghost. He is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit. He'll make you holy. 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 
Shazam. Amen. Hallelujah. What is holy? Jesus. Jesus. I only came to say what Father says, do what Father did. I have no will of my own. That's holy. Completely dedicated and set apart for him. And people can't even understand that. They think holiness is makeup, hairdos, earrings, no earrings, loud ties, quiet ties, jewelry, no jewelry, and don't do that, don't eat this, no. Holiness is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Praise Glory to God. God. Glory to God. Now look over at John chapter 6. John chapter 6. What would Jesus do? Read the book. Amen. You wouldn't have to have a bracelet if you had the Holy Ghost and weren't ashamed to carry one of these all the time. I got one in my car. I got one in my living room. I got one in the kitchen. I got one in the bed. Well, I got six in the bedroom, about 13 in the living room, two in the car, one at work, one in my locker at work. I'm never without this. I'm not ashamed of it. What is that? It's the Bible, bozo. Amen. A Bible, a Bible, a Bible, a Bible. Well, oh, I'm saved, but isn't that carried a little too far? Yeah, if you're blinded without the Holy Ghost, it's way too far, dear. Amen. And, and just keep sinning every day because that's all you know how to do. Amen. Amen. And because you won't carry one of these, you got to get a little plastic bracelet you can hide in your sleeve. What would Jesus do? Get rid of the rubber band on your arm and tote one of these around. Yes. Offend people. Amen. The cross is still an offense to those that are perishing. Yes. Have you found John 6? Yes. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Look at verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak they are spirit, and they are life. Now, what did he say Jesus, the Holy Spirit's ministry was? To speak of things that the Father tells him, to teach you things about Jesus. Jesus could not get across to you without the Holy Spirit, and to bring life to the Word. That's why that Bible's a dead letter, unless you have the Holy Ghost. Come on, brother. You can't even praise Jesus the way he deserves unless you're Holy Ghost filled. Amen. You'll calm down, hold a hymnal, and have a choir. You'll never raise your hands. You'll never shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. You'll never clap your hands, all ye people. You'll never dance before the Lord until the Holy Ghost teaches you how to worship him. Amen. Amen. But it's all in here. But it stays a dead letter until the Holy Ghost opens it up to your heart. And then you start getting the spirit of fully given over to God. And shout and praise and clap and dance when the denominational people think, oh, that's demonic. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't worship it without the Holy Ghost. You can't know of it without the Holy Ghost. And it's the spirit that gives life. To the word. You feel it the Holy Ghost. You go, my God, I never saw that before. And it's something you've read 30 times. Oh, wow, did you see that? How many of you have ever shown somebody something in the Bible? They stand there and blink like a frog in a hell storm. They, can't, they see nothing that you're pointing at. Anybody? Amen. Or just none of you talk to nobody yes. about nothing, huh? Yes. Get the Holy Ghost. You'll start talking. I mean, it doesn't mean they hate you. They don't even hate the Bible. They just can't see it. It's a dead letter till the Holy Spirit makes it come alive in, in their hearts. Amen. We're going to prove that too. Are you ready? Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Very familiar story, but now you'll understand exactly what took place. Say, the Holy Spirit... The Holy Spirit. Spirit. Spirit has to teach me the word has to teach me before I'll understand the word made flesh. Before I understand the word made flesh. The Holy Spirit has to teach me the Holy Spirit has to teach me. Things that Jesus couldn't teach me. 
things that Jesus could. The Holy Spirit has to teach me the Holy Spirit Spirit how to worship Jesus to the, worship to the level Jesus. He's worthy. The, the, level the Holy Lord. Spirit Holy has to take this word out word. of a dead book a dead and dead make book. it alive in Christ. I make it alive, alive in Christ. Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. What did he say over in, in John? He said, he will speak of things that he hears. From who? From me. From God. From God. So he'll hear things from heaven that connect with the word and make the word come alive and you'll see stuff you never saw for 20 years. All in the same book. Because now the Holy Spirit's teaching. Ready? Yes. Yeah. Look at verse 13. Matthew 16, verse 13. Are you ready? ready? When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? What are people saying about me? Who are they saying I am? And they answered and said, Some say that thou art. John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Others say you're Jeremiah or one of the major prophets. Then Jesus said this, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered, Listen, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Everybody look at Pastor. How many of you know that the big fisherman was not known for his intellectual prowess. Yes, amen. He wasn't known for, for quoting scripture or being profoundly knowledgeable of the scrolls. All of a sudden, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus looked at him. All the apostles said, where did that come from? And then Jesus explains where that came from. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Amen. And Jesus answered and said to him, wow. I can imagine Jesus said, Glory. <laughs> Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. For what? Bible teachers didn't teach you this. Yes, sir. Bible college did not teach you this. For flesh and blood, in the Amplified, I think it believe it, it even says, man did not teach you this. Amen. Get, get my Amplified out, Pastor Allen. Let me see if I'm right. I believe I remember it's Jesus saying in the Amplified, man didn't, you didn't get that from man. Flesh didn't teach you that. What, what version is that? NIV. NIV. They translated it correctly in that, in that phrase. This was not revealed. You did not get this from man. Amplified says man or flesh. Man and flesh. Or the flesh of man. In other words, Bible teachers and their natural thinking didn't get this across <coughs> to you. You'll never get this in Bible school. Watch. Then Jesus answered him, saying, Blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied are you, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood men have not revealed this flesh to you. Flesh and blood men has not revealed this to you. Isn't that powerful? Yes, sir. Amen. But my Father, which is in heaven, howbeit when he comes, he will speak of what he hears. So the Holy Spirit will hear directly from Father in heaven and then impart it into your spirit directly from the throne. Amen. Amen. You'll get taught by the Godhead beyond Hallelujah. natural man's understanding. Hallelujah. It's absolutely biblical. Hallelujah. He's explaining what he said. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach what he hears. Amen. Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood of men did not and cannot teach you that kind of understanding. Watch. But my Father which is in heaven, who taught it to him? My Father. The Father through who? The Holy, Spirit. the Holy Ghost. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, in the Amplified, it, it talks about feminine gender, small rock. 
masculine gender, massive rock, as in the rock of a Gibraltar. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what he's saying, Blessed art thou, Simon Peter, <coughs> small and feminine rock, upon this massive rock, I will build my church. Hallelujah. Not the same thing. Hallelujah. Natural men without the Holy Ghost turn that into the Catholic Church and the Vatican and St. Peter's Cathedral. Come on. He didn't say I'm building my church on you, Peter. I'm building my church on revelation knowledge straight from heaven through the Holy Ghost that Satan cannot tear down. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. What's it say in the Amplified, Pastor Allen? And I tell you, you are Peter, Petros, masculine, a large piece of rock. And on this rock, Petra, feminine, feminine huge rock like Gabriel. Why would the huge rock be feminine tense? Because you are what? The body of Christ, the what? The, the bride, feminine tense. The church, feminine tense, engaged to the bridegroom, masculine tense. Peter, you're a masculine little rock, but I'm going to build my church on this huge rock of Gibraltar, the feminine rock. Hallelujah. The body, the woman, the bride of Christ. You can't even understand that without the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Catholics didn't. They got it all wrong. Completely inverted. Amen? Amen? Amen. What's he going to build his church on? Revelation knowledge. Yes. Glory be to God. Or understanding that only comes by the Holy Ghost. And you can only understand it in the Holy Ghost. <coughs> Your head will never understand it. Your flesh and blood intellect will never understand it. So your flesh and blood intellect will always be able to be torn down by the gates of hell. Amen. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Amen. But the Holy Ghost revelation in your spirit <coughs> will stand under any attack of demons. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Say this with me. The second greatest blessing the, the second, second greatest, greatest blessing. blessing after salvation, after salvation, is baptism with the Holy Ghost. He's baptism with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now just match this up. I can't teach you what you need to know. You'll never learn enough to really glorify me. You get revelation from heaven by the Holy Ghost that nobody else can ever teach you. Oh, I don't need that Holy Ghost stuff. Really? That's ignorance gone to see. Look at somebody say, I desperately need the Holy Spirit. I desperately need the Holy Spirit. I desperately need that ministry. I desperately need My life that depends on standing in that ministry. My life depends on standing in that ministry. What did he say will not prevail against this? The, gate, the entire gates of hell can't stop a Holy Ghost person walking in revelation knowledge. And somebody goes sit there and say, do I have to have that Holy Ghost stuff? Only if you're smart. Only if you want to survive. Only if you want to walk in authority and dominion over every devil ever loosed against you. I'll ask you, do you think you need the Holy Ghost? Amen. 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 I do. I'm not smart enough. I'll never be smart enough. I'm not worshiping Jesus to the glory he deserves. And I need to stand against all the demons being released against me. I need you, Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed are you from the Father. Now the church can be built on this revelation. Now watch, hell cannot win. Watch, now you have discernment. Look what he goes on to say. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Now you can start operating, entering and exiting the spirit realm and doing it right. Instead of standing on the front porch, banging the poor hells of the portholes of glory, trying to get God's attention. Just use the key. Hallelujah. Amen. Revelation knowledge gives you the keys of understanding to open this door, open that door, make this decision, close that door, lock this door, and live effectively. 
Hallelujah. Amen. You receive the keys to the way the kingdom operates with the Holy Spirit ministry in you. Amen. Amen. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. 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 How many of you know what that means? Amen. Raise your hands if you know what that means. Raise your hands if you don't know what that means. Amplify. Now listen. You need to understand this so you can teach your denominational friends. Verse 19, Pastor Allen. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you buy that is declared to be improper and unlawful on earth. You can't do that in my house, devil. Go ahead. Must be already bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, declare lawful. Must be what is already loosed in heaven. Oh, it's no big deal. That's okay. Let it let it slide. <coughs> Does heaven allow it? Does heaven lock it up? Can you do it in heaven? Then you can't do it in my living room. Hallelujah. Do they do it in heaven? Then you better be doing it in my living room. Whatever I say you can't do better be what the kingdom of God says you can't do. Well, the devil, God will use the devil to teach you. Is the devil holding class in heaven? Right. No. The, the, God will bust your legs to teach you. Is God busting legs in heaven?